So, Mo Focus, so first we're going to start off our scene with a Node 2D called Tileset Creator or whatever. Next, we're going to create our script and then make an animated sprite and add it as a child. I'll go ahead and name it Tiles. Next, we're going to make new sprite frames and then add a bunch of images into it. So, you just find a folder that has a bunch of PNGs or something like this, the images that I got from Kenny, and then just add it to the sprite frames. The sprite frames we have created contain a bunch of textures and we're going to iterate through that to get all the images and generate our tile set. We're going to have four export variables, two of them are named path and file name. Path will just be the path to the folder and file name will be the name of the file and we'll just automatically add .tres afterwards so that way whoever's using this only has to type in what they want the uh, tile set to be called. Next we're going to have a boolean that determines whether or not we generate collisions for the tiles. So this could be useful if you want to make floors versus walls, or water versus ground. This next export variable isn't really needed, but it's just for displaying in the scene just to make sure that we did everything correctly. It's just the number of columns that we have, and uh, it'll just be once we reach that number, then we're going to go to the next row. And right here I'll, contain, I'll have a number that starts off at zero and just keeps counting up until we reach columns. And here we'll keep track of a position variable that will just like uh, offset all the images visually so that way we can see them, you know, like a grid. In this script, the tile set will be created within the ready function. So right when the scene is loaded, we'll just create the uh, T res. Next, we're going to make a variable of type tile set that starts off empty, but we'll add to it as we go along this function. And at the end, we're going to use resource saver .save to save this uh, tile set as a .t res file. We'll do this using the static resource saver class and then we'll call the save function of that and pass in the path plus file name plus .tres. And so that way we could uh, save it as a .tres file and then we're going to pass tileset into that. This will be after we've generated everything. Right now it would just make an empty file without anything in it. Now we're going to go through a for loop that goes through each frame of the animated sprite. And we're going to do this by using getting the animated sprite, getting the dot .frames, and then getting the frame count. And then we're going to pass in a string that has an animation in it. You want to make an export variable of this so that way you could change which animation you're trying to target when you're making this tile set. Animated sprites could have multiple animations that are designated by strings. This one's called default. So we're going to call the default animation when we're using this script. And right here I'm making the export variable that's of type string and we're just going to set it to default by default. Then we'll pass the animation variable into the get frame count function. Now we're going to be able to iterate through each frame that the animated sprite has. Next we're going to grab the texture and put it into a variable. We'll use this using the get frame function. We have to pass in the animation and the frame we're currently on. Next we're going to make a new sprite and then set the texture of that sprite to the texture that we got from the animated sprites animation. Oh yeah! It's nice to make a little shortcut variable that I just like to call SZ for size and we're just going to get the size of the texture with the get size function. Next we're going to set the sprite equal to the position plus the size of the texture halved. And we're just doing this so that we could offset it and just show it as a grid to the whoever's using this. Because uh, each one, like in computers, like you know, you have like a little box, let's say this is a box, it always loads the top left first and we want to add by half the width in height to get to the center so that way we display the image in the center. So right here we're going to do position.x plus size.x so that way we're uh, moving the sprites along and the reason why I want to display them is just so we can see that we're doing everything right when we run this scene. This is like almost like a little test scene in a way before we make the plugin just to make sure everything's working. And uh, yeah so if you see all the images that means it made them all correctly. So after all this, we're going to increase the column by 1, and then we're going to check if it's greater than the max number of columns. If it is, then we'll reset the x value of the position, uh, increase the row by increasing the y value of the position by size, and then we're going to just uh, reset columns back to 0 just to make a new row, and then start drawing it out again. So already, if you did load this scene, it would uh, it would not make do anything to the tile set. All you'd see is just a bunch of sprites that are set together. But you just have an empty file that doesn't have anything in it. See look right here. So we're going to run it real quick. You'll see everything displayed and boom. Yeah. So you see everything displayed right here. And if you didn't do the little offset that I did, you would just see this. You wouldn't be able to see anything from here or anything from right here. You'd just see half of it. But this is just to make sure everything's loading in correctly. So we're loading, those are all the tiles that we want to load in. And see right here, it already made it. 
I'm going to uh, change the little path to this. So here's what you could do. You could just like uh, say copy path, get this, and then boom, we got our whole path. And uh, I'll just name it tiles for now. And this is just like a little empty file that we have. See, there's nothing in it. So next we're going to make a function called add to tile set. It'll just add one element to the tile set at a time. And it'll take in a tile set and a sprite. The sprite will contain the texture that we need to do this. Next we're going to use the get last unused tile ID to get the current ID of the tile that we're on. And then we're going to use that for pretty much every single function call that we have in this function. We're going to make a new rec2 with a position of vector2.0 and a size of the uh, texture that we have by using size. The rec will determine how the texture is displayed in the tile set as well as the collisions that are generated in the tile set. First we need to create a tile with the create tile function and then pass in the ID to that that we've generated. Next we're going to set the tile's name with the name of the sprite. You could change this string to whatever you want but for this code we're just going to use sprite.name. Next we're going to set the tile set texture and then pass in the texture from the sprite that we have. Next we're going to use tile set region and then we're going to use the rec that we generated before to set the region according to this rec. Next we'll put that function into the ready function just to test if we're actually generating anything in the tile set. No collisions are being generated at this time so if you didn't care about collisions you'd already be done. It's loading up right now and boom. Okay so let's see. And boom. It's all good. So if collisions are enabled then first off we're going to generate a shape variable that's uh, set to rectangle shape 2D. We're using a rectangle shape 2D instead of a collision shape 2D because tile sets are expecting something of type shape 2Ds and uh, rectangle shape 2D is perfect for it. Using the rec that we generated before we could get the size of it to generate our extents for the collision shape. And all we gotta do is say rec.size times 0 0.5 just divide by 2 or else it's way too big for some reason. It always turns out two times as big as what we want. Next we're going to use a tile set shape and use the shape that we generated before to uh, generate a shape for our tile set. And you probably want to use a different ID for the shape but here we're just using the same ID as a tile ID which is probably a bad idea. There's probably a reason why there's a separate ID but fuck it. Since the shape starts off in the top left when the tile set is generated we also need to offset it by half the rectangle size. So we're just going to use this with a tile set shape offset and then we're just going to pass in the ID in two spots again and then also just pass in the rec.size times 0.5 just so that we can offset correctly and the collision shape will be on the tile that we're trying to set. Still low and just fine, no errors, so we did everything okay. And right here, let's go to the level. So if we look at now, we have visible collision shapes and they cover the entire rect. So right here, that one. It looked better on these full ones. So it's like a full one. And they all have collision shapes. Now, if we just set collisions to false right here, let's do it. And we ran it again. See right here? Boom. They don't have collisions anymore. So maybe this could be our floors. And right here, we can make another tile map. And set this one to a different one. Let's make this one uh, walls. Set it to collisions on. Let's just use the same um, uh, the same animated sprite. Boom. Now all these will have collisions. Now we'll have walls and floors. We just need to load the tile set. Load. Walls. And boom. So we have two different ones. They'll both look the same. So let's do walls right here. But these will have collisions. That's the only difference. Okay. Yeah. And that's how you can make your like little level with a little tile set. So you just made your own tile set and yeah. Now you have everything. Alright. So I hope this helped. See you guys motherfucking later.